Right, so I shall have like fluid. Welcome back to Nevin. And if you remember last time, it was the day of the contest and our rabbit bard had a, shall we say, interesting experience. Let's see what happens after that. Suddenly, I feel like my mind is leaving my body behind. My muscles tense up like never before. Even the training sessions with Gillian are less painful than whatever is happening to me. Gillian, where is... Finally, I open my eyes and see Melbourne sitting comfortably in the chair not far from me. It still feels like my head is open. The prince's side stands the pants who just knocked me out. As I try to straighten up to get away from him, something holds me back. Are those chains? Did they really tie me to the bed? What the fuck is going on? The bear stands up and reaches a hand towards me. I blink a few times to get a better look at his face. And I can finally see his reassuring look. Easy there. Well, I know the day's been a little emotional, but you have nothing to worry about while you're here. I blink again, not out of fatigue this time, but rather out of disbelief. Then I try to raise my arms as high as possible to observe my bindings while staring at the prince and his bodyguard. The latter still looks wary with his hand on the hilt of his sword. Nothing to worry about? The last thing I remember is him beating me up and now I'm chained up like some wild animal. I need an explanation now! No more time for the usual pleasantries. Prince or not, he'll give me an answer. Well, Gillian thought you were attacking us. He reacted to the bodyguard, that's all. He could have killed you, but he didn't. Uh, believe me, knowing him, that's a show of restraint on his part. The bear smiles as the panther growls and looks away. That doesn't answer all my questions. Did they seriously think I'm a danger to them? I mean, I was singing, then I felt like time stopped and... Nothing. What happened? I almost beg the grizzly, hoping he has an answer that is understandable and without too many consequences. But deep down, I have the beginnings of an idea of what might have happened. I just want to be sure. Well, God finally chose you. No. Did they really do that? At the most important mo moment of my life? You bastards. I look up at the ceiling, but it's really the sky I'd like to look at. If I could raise my arm, I'd give a big old middle finger to the clouds. Melbjorn clears his throat to bring my attention back to him. I honestly thought he was going to be mad that this contest was ruined. He has the biggest grin I've ever seen him show so far. Once the chaos was over and the guests evacuated, I quickly realised that your brand had appeared. But it's not just any. Before the bear has time to finish his sentence, the door to the room swings open and Aeon strolls in, followed closely by Lusk. That troublemaker is awake. Perfect. Your song was so striking, I thought time had stopped. Well, it really did stop for us, but... Well, could have shaken up enough today. I think it's wise to spare him your humour. The bear king has the same amused look on his face as Melbjorn as he addresses his husband. Then he turns his attention back to me and speaks with a bit more gravity in his voice. You have been branded by Nevin. It happened while you were singing. This is the first in our history, so you can understand why we are all surprised, and why there has been hostile reactions. Gillian lows his muzzle as if ashamed. I don't know if I can get past the fact that he hit me so hard, but now I know why he did it. Not to start. But who won the competition? Everyone gets quiet, then Aeon bursts out laughing for addressing Lusk as if I wasn't there. He's really funny. We tell him he's been branded by one of the forgetful ones, and he asks who won the competition. There are priorities, little guy. Aeon. This prince speaks in a dry tone, giving the tiger a hard look. 
If the latter does not let himself be stopped and defies the gaze of his adoptive son. He ought the first to say the kingdom needs to be stronger. I make sure he knows what to expect from now on. What my father means is that what happened in the competition will soon be known throughout the continent, since there were nobles from all the neighbouring countries. Officially, we'll keep you at the court as a royal bard, but unofficially you are an asset to the kingdom, and as such your life is in danger. You must stay here for your safety, Eric. I don't feel like I have any say in this whole thing. I never asked to be an asset to the kingdom. Look, it's very nice of you to offer me the position, but I came to win the contest. You all tend to forget this, but I am a bard. Nothing more, nothing less. Have I earned my place here or not? The royal family exchanges a few glances, then Lusk steps forward with an embarrassed look on his face as he scratches an ear. Your abilities are undeniable. In other circumstances, you would surely have earned your place as an actual royal bard. But the fact is that today, now that you are branded, we cannot promise you an honourably earned position. We have many factors to consider that beyond anything we've experienced before. Not only is your life in danger if you bear this brand, it also means you may be in danger in the lives of other innocent people. But I... I have no intention of hurting other people. I just want to sing. I do my best to hide the shakiness of my voice. I've been asking for this brand for so long, and here it comes crashing into my life with full force, almost literally. The irony of the situation would make me laugh if it didn't have such tragic consequences. Eric, what Lusk is saying is that we know absolutely nothing about your brand other than what occurred during the competition. The most reasonable approach is to study it and help you master it. Let's say that's the only possibility. Then what? I've said it before, I want to earn my place here as a singer, and Akhet deserves that title as much as I do. I can't honestly tell you you won when only a few of the contestants were able to participate. But if you insist so much, we'll make a deal, buddy. If you agree to stay here, learn how to use your brand and help us, then we'll prepare a new contest you'll have a chance to win it fair and square. Does that sound like an acceptable solution to you? I gulp on me Dayon's eyes. He's suddenly much more serious, which seems to be out of the ordinary for what I know of him. This idea seems both enticing and terribly costly. Are they willing to go that far to keep me here? Is this brand that powerful? The prince's hand lands on my shoulder as he smiles at me with this reassuring air. I'll personally supervise you. Nothing will happen to you with me by your side. I promise. When the person enters the room, a hard time seeing who it is since the king's blocked the view, I see two large ears sticking out from behind them. Finally, I see what appears to be a rather elderly fennec. She's wearing an elegant outfit that contrasts sharply with the more extravagant clothes of Lusk and Aeon. For a moment, I see her deep yellow gaze lingering on me and watch me as if I was some curiosity. Well, I'm probably a curiosity now that I think about it. That said, as much as I like attention, I'm not sure I want that kind of attention. She then shifts her gaze back to the kings and bows quickly, as if embarrassed to have forgotten their presence. I would like to give my report elsewhere, my lords. While I hear she's clearly not from here, the words are perfectly articulated, she has a very strong Macadian accent. Oh, I need to know the consequences of his brand's awakening. The fennec nods and looks me out of the corner of her eye before continuing. The nobles were all invited to stay for a banquet. Both of them accepted, but some Macadian diplomats preferred to return to their country despite our uh, insistence. We did our best to hold them as long as possible. Uh, trying to keep them here any longer would not be well received by our neighbours. They might think we are holding our guests hostage. The white tiger turns his attention back to me and sighs softly. I'm a casual to know about your powers within the week. The other countries will soon follow. I thank you, Sammy. I make sure we know which diplomats are leaving the capital. I don't intend to forget them, in case they ever set foot in Frostfang again. Sammy bows the king once more and leaves without a word, giving me and the bear prince one last inquiring look. When she's outside, Aeon gets harsher as he stares at me. I would like to add that the awakening of your branch shattered our stained glass windows, and without the intervention of several of us, there would have been many deaths. 
Unfortunately, only a few people were injured. I insist, just so you understand the importance of training. Faced with the tiger's reproach, I can only lower my gaze with shame. I may not like it, but he is right about this. An awkward silence ensues, but thankfully Lusk straightens up and claps his hands while clearing his throat. Well, that you handle the situation, Mayor Bjorn. Your father and I have to deal with the problems that arise from this incident. The young grizzly nods to his fathers and watches them walk away. He sees that the panther remains in the room and insists with a glance toward the exit. Can you leave us alone for a moment, Gillian? There is no danger to me. The bodyguard bows without a word and gives me a hard look that makes me shudder. I see his eyes filled with rage again for a moment and my body tenses. Fortunately, I quickly realise imagination is playing tricks on me. Shit, it affects me more than I thought it would. Well, I'm glad you found some common ground with my fathers. I hesitate for a moment, trying to figure out how to respond to him. No one really gave me a choice, after all. Am I being held captive? My concern is obviously clear as the bear shakes his head sharply. No, of course not. Well, I mean... He sighs heavily and rubs his muzzle, searching for his words. Has he taken his time to make up a lie, or is the situation so difficult to explain? My father spoke the truth about your brand. You need to master it, if not to serve the kingdom, at least to not do harm unintentionally. And if I can assure you one thing, it's that you won't find a better place in the capital for that. I'm feeling like he expects more from me than just mastering my brand. I'm not a warrior, male beyond, nor a hero for that matter. I thought that was clear from our training. The bear lowers his head, his gaze now fixed on the ground. He seems lost in deep and unpleasant thought. Is something wrong? Well, I don't know what my fathers are planning to do about you. Well, on the other hand, I think you can help me even more than I had originally imagined. I understand that you have your own plans, but the gods have placed new responsibilities on your shoulders. Now, how you plan to use these powers is up to you, when you can master them. Melbjorn needs forward to better look me in the eye. All semblance of amusement has disappeared from his face. I'm at a moral impasse. You could solve a lot of my problems, but I don't want you to be just a tool for the kingdom. I'm about to speak, but the grizzly stops me by holding out his hand. I also understand that you are angry at the gods. Believe me, no one here will have a better grasp of the problem than I do. I curse him every day of my existence. I can see Melbjorn's claws digging into the metal of his armour. I could swear I can see it bending into the sheer power of the prince's grip. Neither has got to choose how we'd like to live our lives. We have to make do with the cards we hold. You have the opportunity to help me, and I have the opportunity to help you. There are probably thousands and thousands of people out there who are stronger and smarter than I will ever be. So why me? I'm only a bard. I was hoping to be only the best bard. I managed to wring a small chuckle from the prince that forced myself to smile despite the emptiness inside me. Only that, hmm? Well, if I can reassure you, I don't intend to get in the way of your musical career. There's nothing stopping you from helping me and playing for me at the same time. But, back to the topic of responsibility. Well, it's simple, you have Nevin's brand. You're the only being in the known world to bear one. And how many people do you think are capable of what you'll soon be capable of out there? That's the thing. I don't know how to activate this brand. I don't even know what it does, and... Neil Bjorn reaches out to stop me once more and shakes his head, smiling. I'm going to help you figure this out. Well, I don't think you're aware of the power you have in your hands. Well, not yet, anyway. He gets up and pulls a sizable mirror towards my bed, slightly behind me. He then rummages through a cabinet and pulls out another one, small enough to be held with one hand. Take off your top and turn your back to the large mirror. I look down on my chains and shove the mail beyond so that he understands my problem. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Hold on. I feel his powerful hands linger on the back of my top, and I hear a rip that makes me tense up. 
That was my favourite shirt. I'll have another one tailored for you. I sigh and then promptly comply, too eager to see what the brand looks like. He hands me the small mirror which I raise to face me, and at first I widen my eyes at the state of my face. I have a bruise encircled in my left eye. I don't feel the pain like I should. I see the rest of my body in the reflection of the other mirror. It too is covered in bruises and almost turned black in some places. And finally, as if cutting its way through the bruises, I see it. Numerous intersecting circles now cover my entire back. This brand is as large as Tenox. I stand speechless for what seems like an eternity, and male beyond has to break the silence. For all that I have cursed the gods, I can only be glad that they have placed you in my path. It's as if you complete me, in a way. Hearing these words coming from the prince, I blink and watch him in surprise. I didn't think he was the type to blurt it out like that. I can't help but smile, very frankly this time. At least he has a gift for getting me past my problems, even if it's only temporary. Don't you think you're getting ahead of yourself, my lord? You have heirs to produce, and I doubt I can provide that. I manage to make the big guy blush, then his eyes widen before he pulls himself together, scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. It looks like the idea of being with another man isn't totally unpleasant for him after all. Well, it's good that you're joking. It means you've recovered. That's reassuring. I was worried the whole thing had really shaken you up, but you're still the same smooth-talking rabbit. I never smooth-talk, dear. My promises and sweet words, I keep them as much as possible. And as usual, Eric, this little humour and good company bring you out to the bottomless pit that is your mind. How much longer do you think you'll last like this? The grizzly gives me a little tap on the shoulder. This is the first time he's really been able to control his strength with me and not shake my whole being while doing it. Sorry about the restraints, by the way. It's not my decision. Yeah, don't worry. I'm used to it. I grin and wink at the bear, who sighs heavily as he frees me with a look that wavers between amusement and embarrassment. All of a sudden, you almost make me regret your release. Free at last. I'm surprised I don't feel any of my broken ribs as I stretch my four limbs. Several of my bones even crack quite satisfyingly before I stand up for good. It probably heals me from the wounds inflicted by Gilliant. Didn't think it was possible to do that so quickly. The thought of Gillian hitting me as a hard time leaving my mind. Come on, Eric. I'm trying to think of something else. You shouldn't regret freeing me. I'm certainly the first gallant in distress you rescue, after all. If you want, I'll get Tenoch to play the dragon. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't win that fight. Melbjorn would lay the chains on the bed, grabs them again and pretends to put a handcuff on my wrist. Would you look at that? The prince is playful. I don't think you quite understand. What you're doing here is not a threat to me. It's an invitation. Uh, okay, all right, I admit defeat. The grizzly sighs heavily for dropping the heavy chains on the bed. The grizzly sighs heavily for dropping the heavy chains on the bed, then crosses his arms and looks at me disapprovingly. He seems impervious to my attempts to get the broom out of his ass. This time, let's try something different. You know what? Once I get to know the city a little better, I'll invite you out. I'm sure it'll do you good to see your kingdom through different eyes. You know it's dangerous for both of us now. You like adventurous spirit, big guy. All the more reason for me to get you out of this castle. You need a disguise, that's all. I only managed to make my interlocutor sigh once more. Then he shakes his head with a smile. We're not joking. You're trading in this shadow for tomorrow, near the Temple of the Twelve. We'll do whatever you want once you're no longer a walking hazard. Tomorrow? I didn't think they want me to train so soon. Seems like they obviously didn't plan on giving me a choice. Oh, and uh, Gillian will go with you. Gillian? I, um, can't you accompany me instead? Melbourne raises an eyebrow, questioning me with a look. For a moment, I've got that he was frozen in time like everyone else. He probably only got echoes of what the panther did to me. 
I'm pretty sure your bodyguard smashed out of my ribs in addition to messing up my face. He did more than just his job. He went on the rampage against me. I see. The prince clears his throat and looks hesitant for a moment. Do you have something to say to me? Well, I understand you're scared, but this problem has to do with Arakar's brand. The more Gideon absorbs the powers of a brand, the less control he has over himself. Well, that said, I've never seen him lose his mind completely. It wouldn't surprise me if he released enough power that he was no longer in control of his actions. It's not totally reassuring to know that he can get out of control in an instant, but at least he's not naturally bloodthirsty. That's a plus. I know this can't be easy for you, but I can't go with you. I have lots and lots of work ahead of me. Seeing my pleading look, the bear rubs his eyes with a long sigh. Well, I can try to find someone else. But it's better for me to have Gillian accompany you. He's one of the few who can guarantee your safety. You mean, he's one of the few who can keep me under control, hmm? He chuckles and smiles at me with his usual amused expression, obviously surprised by my bravado. That too, yes. It's very honest for you to admit it. Well, it's as much for your safety as it is the safety of the residents of Frostfang. Besides, be foolish of me to lose your trust by lying. I told you, I don't intend to manipulate you into serving the kingdom. I much prefer cooperation. So, does that mean if I want to, I could leave the city right now and become a hermit in the forest, without anyone stopping me from leaving? This time the prince frowns and gives me a disapproving look. However, when he speaks he sounds more disappointed than angry. No, I just told you. I value my people's safety along with yours. Learn how to use your brand, then we'll talk. Oh, come on, I was just joking. Not really, but I don't plan on bothering me, I'll be on any longer with my ideas. He's been more than patient with me. To even say he's quite friendly. Not to mention the fact he's probably the most supportive figure of power here, so I don't intend to incur his wrath. All right. I hope we have a better understanding of the concern we all have, once you've used your powers. And we can't afford to joke about that right now. I promise to follow the training. I was just making a wild speculation, that's all. But I think I understand the importance of all of this to you. The grizzly nods before returning to a calmer demeanour. Obviously, I told him what he wanted to hear. I wouldn't recommend trading on an empty stomach. Using a brand always has some side effects. Imagine it must be the same with yours, even though I doubt you'll be able to activate it today. I offer a big smile to the prince, then nods I dig through my pile of clothes. Thanks for the advice. Uh, but I was wondering, uh, will I see you again tonight? Well, if I'm done with everything I plan to do, yes. And be ready as soon as possible tomorrow. I'll send someone to pick you up here to take you to your training session. Understood, Your Majesty. The bear doesn't even bother to grumble at my little dig. He just sighs and heads for the exit. I'm counting on your seriousness, Eric. I don't expect me I'll be on to finish this sentence with a... Even though I shouldn't. But surprisingly leaves it at that and walks out of the room. No pressure, Eric. You just have to meet the expe expectations of the entire royal family. Uh, rather, an entire kingdom. I take a moment to put my thoughts back in place. A lot happened all at once. Don't even know exactly how much time passed between the competition and my waking up. But it's dark outside, so I guess I did lose a whole day at the very least. Paquette isn't too worried about me. Of course, he's probably worried sick, Harry. Eric, no need to lie to yourself. Well, instead of thinking about that, I should try to sleep. I don't really want to. I'll be accused of making a joke of the situation again if I'm not properly awake tomorrow. So I collapse on my bed, grunting in pain as my back comes in contact with the chain still lying there. Ah, fucking... Once the iron shackles thrown to the floor and the pain over, I sprawl and stare at the ceiling, trying to fall asleep despite the excitement of what the future holds, mixed with fear of what may lie ahead. The night is short, and if I slept at all, I barely noticed. I get up with a grimace, my hair going all over the place and my eyes gloomy. There are days like this when you know everything is going to be complicated before you even get out of bed. 
I rarely have time to change my clothes when someone knocks on the door again. When I open it, I've had myself face to face with Semi, who's looking at me with a jaded expression. You look like you're dressed for stage performance, not for a training session. I can't help but blink sharply at such bluntness. I don't intend to remain speechless. That's my job, to put star before practicality. The priests are going to love you. Semi's sarcastic sneer makes it clear that I'll probably be out of my element in no time. She takes the lead without another word, and I have to follow her. She's moving fast for the age she seems to be. So, you're the one sent to keep an eye on me? Mm-hmm. I've been introduced to a lot of people, but not you until yesterday. Uh, Semi, right? That's my name, indeed. A silence ensues. I decide to break it by starting the conversation again. And who exactly are you for the kings? I'm in charge of intelligence in the capital. Any other questions? In other words, a spy, if I understand correctly. Are you allowed to say that so openly? Not that I'm a danger to the kingdom, but I expected it to be a secret. Well, I'm getting too old to be active anyway. I might as well be retired. Fortunately, walking people around the city gives me my daily dose of action. She gives me an amused glance, which I return to her. To be honest, I wasn't expecting this conversation to be pleasant, but she's starting to grow on me. Oh, no offence, ma'am, but given that Gillian was supposed to accompany me in the first place, I was expecting someone more... intimidating. Oh, I can be, if necessary, but I'm sure it won't come to that, will it? The fennec's small, quavering voice sounds gentle at first, as if I'm dealing with a dotty grandmother. Regaze tells a different story. It's sharp, more so than anything Anthra can her age. Oh, no, no, I won't be a problem. I promised the prince that I'd go through this training. Good. It looks like Semi's purposely avoiding the most crowded hallways in the palace. I wonder how much attention I'm likely to get now that I have this brand. At least it looks like she knows her way around. We're outside the castle walls in no time. But even once we're on the streets of Frostfang, we pass through small winding paths between the houses. If I didn't know the kings and Melbourne don't trust her, I'd be very worried. Again, my concern seems to overflow from my mind as the fennec smiles reassuringly at me. So, what do you plan to do with your powers once you have mastered them? I blink, surprised by this sudden question. After thinking about it, I don't even know what my powers are. It's only even less about the way I'm going to use them. All I know is that I wish I had a brand that would help me as an artist. Hmm. I don't intend to lecture on how to use it. I think you've been there before, or will be soon. She pauses as melancholy seems to settle in her eyes as well as in her voice. There is a certain unfairness in the fact that our lives can be defined by such a sudden event, isn't there? I can only nod with a smile. She's saying the same thing as Melbion. I must admit, it feels good not to be alone in this. But I don't intend to mope about this situation. If the gods have given me a challenge, I intend to take it. No, I won't change my plan just because of this brand. I want to be the royal bard first and foremost. As I walk down the alley, I return a smile to the fennec who nods approvingly. A wise decision. Suddenly I hear some snicker a little further down the road. A motley crew seems to be blocking the way and talking loudly. Nothing very surprising at first glance. That said, I quickly realise in addition to looking totally drunk, the members of said crew are having a sword fight in the middle of the path. This doesn't seem to stop Semi as she continues at the same pace. She forces her way through to the point where a coyote's blade comes within inches of her ears. Yeah, watch it, old hag. Can't you see we're practising? Practising your drinking? I can see that, yes. You are very clearly lacking in experience in this matter. The fennec flashes a mocking grin at the coyote, who grimaces as he struggles to find his words. Yeah, you're lucky, you're ancient. I was about to kick your ass all the way across the street. He then shifts his gaze back to me and a malevolent smile appears on his lips. But you, you won't pass without a fight. The fuck. I'm about to protest that coyote suddenly threatens me with the point of his blade. Next thing I know, the sword shatters and bits of metal scatter on the ground, clinking against the stone. A thin strand of water stretches from the sky between my aggressor and me, then recedes until it reaches a cloaked figure sitting on the edge of a roof. 
The coyote looks down his broken blade, then turns his attention back to Sammy and myself with his comforted look. The phoenix smiles politely at him before continuing on her way. Suddenly, it seems that no one wants to hurt us anymore. I walk through the small crowd with an awkward smile toward the drunks who seem to have sobered up all of a sudden, and look up at our saviour who is watching me back. Despite the hooded outfit he wears, he has two big ears sticking out and a big bushy tail. Is he also a fennec? I wonder how long this person has been following us. It's not totally reassuring to be watched like that. Uh, this one is with you, I assume? You assume correctly. Well, if you think my old carcass is all the kingdom has mobilised for your protection, then you don't fully understand the situation. But why all this? Because you matter, not just to the kingdom, but to the prince too. He practically begged me to go with you. It's not like him. I can't help but smile as I imagine the bear on his knees offering mountains of gold to the fennec. Maybe I'm exaggerating the scene a bit in my mind, but I'm sure it's still took a lot of effort considering he's a prince. I'd have loved to see that. That's partly my fault. As I said, under normal circumstances, Gillian would have escorted me. I know. I've seen the aftermath of your brand's awakening and the condition you are in, and I can understand your fear. But he's not a bad kid. He just has issues with his brand, just like you do. She gives me another amused look for shifting her gaze to the spike pierce in the sky. The Temple of the Twelve. How oh, we have arrived. So Vol will now take care of you. The priest of Goran was at the contest. Himself. Shouldn't it be the priest of the forgetful ones who takes care of me? A priest of the forgetful ones? I'm afraid I don't know him. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure he exists. I ran into him when I came to the temple during my first days here. Are you sure he wasn't the priest for another god? Or maybe a crook? I don't necessarily always pay attention to what's going on around me, but still. I'm pretty sure I didn't hallucinate our encounter. A guy dressed in blue from head to toe. It's hard to forget. As I'm about to answer, I'm interrupted by a deep voice echoing from the temple entrance. Lady Sammy, as always, it's a pleasure to see you. Eric, pleased to meet you personally. The boy is standing in front of the entrance, arms crossed behind his back, watching both of us. Yes, of all, King Lask would like to apologise for forcing you to take on this extra work, and I hope it does not upset your own plans too much. Well, given the exceptional nature of the situation, please reassure our king that I will not hold it against him. And hello from me too. So you're the one who's going to teach me how to use this thing. I point to my back and the priest just gives me a quick glance. Something tells me this isn't exactly the having fun and learn kind of teacher. Indeed, I think the next few days will be enlightening for both of us. I see someone is brimming with enthusiasm. Uh, follow me. Aren't we going in the temple? We are not in some sort of wildlings village. The kingdom has specialised spaces available for brand training. Blah, 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 we're not in some sort of wildlings village. Who does he think he is? I have a feeling we're not going to get along. Fortunately, the training grounds are not too far away. Indeed, I can see why training here will be easier. It's a long one-storey building that borders a large open space, which is divided into four separate fields bounded by wooden fences. Each of these fields offers a different environment, suitable for one or more types of brands. One of them is simply a square of land, with nothing else on it. There are two people on it right now, a snow leopard and another fennec. The other field looks very similar to the first one. There are several braziers spread around the area, probably to help new firebrand bearers. The third has a pool of water at its centre. The last is a simple garden in which several people are planting what they assume are seeds under the supervision of a priest. You'd have to allow the training of all types of brands. Well, at least those related to an element. A gentleman, if you'll forgive me, I think I see my grandson training. Well, of course, Lady Semi. I'll send you the rabbit once we are finished. Hey, I have a name, you know. Oh, forgive me. He doesn't really look sorry. Quite the contrary, I wonder what I did to piss that one off. 
After Semi leaves, Royal leads me to one of the doors of the main building, taking us past several rooms, some with their doors open. Peeking into one of them, I can see Anthrocans cutting boards as carpenters would. Then another, a clash between armoured warriors takes place. I wonder what all this has to do with learning how to use brands. Finally, we enter a small room with a series of chairs and desks. A study room, I guess. I leap into the first chair I come across, while Vol remains standing in the centre of the room, inspecting me up and down again. Oh, good. Here yeah, we'll do without all the Lord and other courtesies of that sort. You are here to learn, I am here to teach. That is the only status that matters. Understood, Vol. Offer him a big grin, which he responds with his usual death stare. I have a feeling we're going to have a blast together. All right. Now, take off your shirt, please. What, right now? You could buy me a drink first. Do you intend to respond to every one of my remarks with insubordination? Be perfectly honest. It's quite likely it'll happen again. Well, let's have a long sigh. I simply wish to see your brand. So take off your shirt and show me your back. Now. Okay, all right. I can't even joke anymore. I finally obey, presenting my bare back to the priest. The latter then slowly follows the lines on my back with one of his fingertips, making me shiver in the process. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. I suppose there's no chance it's a known brand and this is all a misunderstanding? No chance at all. I've never seen anything like it. I feel like it changes shape slightly every time I stop looking at it directly. It's good that I'm not the only one seeing this. From over there, I thought this thing was driving me crazy. I'll talk about your brand with more respect. It's a gift from the gods. I didn't ask them for anything. Well, not for that specifically. Are you not honoured with what you've received? I pause for a moment. I don't know, actually. I haven't really had time to settle down and think hard about all that's involved. I'm happy to finally have a brand, obviously. But to have Nevins means a lot of different things. I'm unique now. There's only one person in the world who can do what I can do, and that's me. But it's not something I worked for. I didn't do anything to earn it. It's just... there. I don't know. I always wanted to be famous, for people to know my name. But I wanted to be thanks to my own merits. I worked for years on my singing to be the best. All of a sudden, I'm the chosen of Nevin. No matter what I do, no matter what the qualities I have, it'll always be what's the most interesting about me. I don't see what difference it makes. This brand is a gift from Nevin, but it's part of you. It's up to you what you want to do with it. It's a tool to use and to respect. You are the only link to Nevin. What you do with that link is entirely up to you. That's why we're here, to guide you to the righteous path. The righteous path according to whom? According to the gods, obviously. That's convenient. The priests are the only ones who know how to interpret divine wills. Well, these discussions can wait. Today, let's think practical first. What exactly do you know about the use of a brand? It makes some light and stuff happen. I guess that's one way to look at it. But it's actually a little more complex than that. A brand can have three different states. He leans over, showing me the brand on his right arm. Up close I can see the metal covering has been poured directly onto the flesh. It's not exactly a pleasant sight. I really wonder what happened. It's clearly not an accident. My brand is dormant for now, as is yours. I'm not using its power. However, I can awaken it. I still won't use it directly, but if I need to, I can call on its power much faster than if it were still dormant. Beneath the metal lines, I can now see a faint bluish light escaping, as if trapped under the steel rectangles on Vol's arms. And finally, I can activate my brand, as in this state that I can directly use its power. The light on his arms intensifies again, while the steel on his brands vibrates slightly. He then pulls a stone from his pocket, making it float slightly above his palm. 
Once in front of my muzzle, the stone contorts, changing shapes and sharpening before returning to its original form, slowly set into Vol's hand. The latter deactivates his brand before looking at me with a satisfied expression. A nice trick. It is indeed a mere artifice for the most fervent of Garan's branded. I could not be the high priest if I don't achieve much more than that. I suppose so. Let's not explain the metal covering your brand. This metal is simply a symbol of the pact between Argon and Garan. Every piece of work coming out of my forge is thus directly marked by the gods, guaranteeing its quality and blessing the object. Okay. Obviously, he takes his job as a priest and blacksmith very seriously. He's not planning on making me a cleric of some sort, so that's really, really not my thing. Then let's get back to our lesson. Do you understand the three states of your brand? Dormant, awake and active. It's not very complicated. That said, you didn't explain how I go from one to the other. For that, we'll have to start by finding your awakening gesture. My awake what? You've seen other people use their brands before. Beginners or those who don't use the gift of the gods much need help activating it. In this case, they need a particular movement. This is called the awakening gesture. It's usually a relatively simple gesture related to your daily life or personality that allows you to initiate the awakening of your brand. I haven't really paid attention to it. Now that I think about it, I think I see what he's talking about. Ragor always tends to slap his chest for activating his brand. I've seen Irwin scratch his every now and then for spitting flames. As an example, here is my awakening gesture. Not that I need it anymore. He places his left hand on one of the tables while picking up his hammer. What is he... Oh, oh gods, no, don't do that! He then raises the hammer and slams it on the back of his paw. Immediately the light of his brand is visible. By the gods, you're out of your mind! By Navan. A what? Your god chose you, you is his name. In that case, by Nevin, you're a lunatic! His face expresses no pain or discomfort. Almost looks like nothing happened. I ran into the resident madman. Absolutely brilliant. It had to land on me. Thinks I'm going to start hitting myself with a hammer. He can stick his arm up his... It's not a gesture I chose. Is it your daily life, your personality that defined it? This simply represents the sacrifices I'm willing to offer in honour of the gods. A little pain is nothing in exchange for their gifts. And the priests of Mariwani can heal me anyway. Well, thank you, but that's not for me. Yeah? Pain is not my thing. Well, unless they tie me to a bed first. But I'll keep that one to myself. Something tells me he's not receptive to that kind of humour. I figured as much. Your gesture is probably something you already do on a daily basis anyway. So what? I spend my time trying all kinds of gestures, see if anything happens. Not just any gesture. Something that is part of your daily routine. Some people awaken through their jobs, others through warrior deeds. But the awakening gesture itself will not be enough. Focus on your brand. Touch it with your mind. It is part of you now. Find a way to reach it. Hey, no worries. Give me ten minutes so I should continue this lesson. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. Man of little faith. Well, faith in me, anyway. It shouldn't be that hard, after all. We just need to find something I do a lot with my brand in mind. I close my eyes to focus. I've only really seen my brand once, but its image is etched in my mind. Slowly I see intersecting circles appearing clearly before me. There's something wrong. As if something is missing. Taken by a sudden burst of inspiration, I set the circles in motion, extremely slowly. So much so that I only notice their movements if I pay attention to them for a few seconds. Perfect. That's it. That's my brand. I take a deep breath and, as slowly and diligently as possible, move my ears and shake my hips. What are you doing? You told me to write gestures that are familiar and represent my personality. And that's all you came up with? 
You'd be surprised how much I dance. I'd rather not know. Obviously, this isn't your awakening gesture. Well, try something else. That's exactly what I do. For a good ten minutes, I try absolutely every gesture that comes to mind. I wink, I wave, I bow. I even try to give a good old-fashioned smack on my ass. Just in case. There's nothing I could do to activate my brand. Not even the beginnings of a light. Damn, I really thought I'd find it in no time. Oh, it looks like it's much more complex than you thought, hmm? I'll figure it out. No one figures it out on the first day. It's even possible that you've made the right gesture already. You're just not used to your brand enough yet. But it will come. So what, I quit and we start again tomorrow? A break would be a good idea, yes. But we won't try again tomorrow. What? We'll meet again in three days. You can keep searching alone in the meantime. So, that's it? For today, yes. However, should you ever manage to awaken your brand, do not activate it. Why not? You wouldn't want to repeat the mistake of what happened during the contest, would you? No, no, I don't want that. Well then, you should go back to Lady Semi. She will escort you back to the castle. We'll see each other in three days. Try to find your awakening gesture by then. I'll find it by the end of the day. Uh, we'll see. This guy seems so enthusiastic that he'd make a rock look like it had been if you were standing next to it. After a final bow to the priest, I walk out of the classroom to meet Semi at the edge of the dirt practice field. She's leaning on the fence, carefully watching the young Fennec in the centre of the field. Her grandson, I suppose. With him is a snow leopard, bare chested, which I'm not going to complain about, holding a bucket in one paw and what appears to be a cloth ball in the other. I stand next to Semi, curious about what's going on. So, how did it go? Didn't achieve anything, but I managed to not piss Vol off, and I'm still alive, so all in all, I'd say that's a win. That's one way of looking at it. Her attention is focused on the field. The feline throws his ball in the direction of the fennec. The latter hits the ground with his foot, and the pillar of earth rises to intercept the projectile before collapsing. So, he is your grandson, right? Precisely. Hastal wishes to become a guard, so ask Rowan to do me a favour and train him a bit. Uh, Rowan? The snow leopard. He is a guard at the castle. I look closely at the feline, squinted retired to remember him. He really looks familiar, perhaps. I must have passed him without realising it. Meanwhile, he continues to throw the balls from his bucket towards the fennec, faster and faster while moving to vary the angles of his throw. The fennec's earthen pillars are getting thinner and thinner, some nearly collapsing before the ball even hits them. Until finally, the projectile cuts all is now nothing more than a line of dust, crashing to hostile snout. Honestly, if this is what training for a brand of Garand looks like, I want to become a teacher. I like to throw things at people's heads too. I don't know if no, aiming at the head was really necessary. Come on, it's not that bad. It's just fabric. I guess you're right. My little Hastel seems to be doing just fine. That's a good sign. I haven't had a chance to really see a brand of Garand in battle yet. I guess it makes a good shield. Oh, we can do a lot more than that. But hostiles always prefer to protect than to hurt. Our family tradition, I guess. She smiles fondly as the two men come our way. She looks like a grandmother, proud of her grandson like that. But I know there's more to it than that. Grandma, what are you doing here? Is that a way to greet your family, Hastelt? I mean, I'm really glad to see you, obviously. I just didn't expect to see you here, that's all. Why is it total coincidence? I wasn't expecting to be here either. I was merely accompanying this fine young man. Ah, so that's the one the boss keeps talking about. Rowan, the snow leopard, comes closer and leans against the fence, giving me a big grin. The boss? The captain, Gillian. You know, tall, moody, and constantly locked in his armour. Rowan, there's no way to talk about your superior. The leopard then turns to Semi, bowing to her, extending his right paw in a direction. A green glow then appears in his left thigh, glowing under his clothes as the rose slowly grows on his palm be offered to the fennec. Okay, I'll admit it. It's kind of sweet. I'm sure it brings him a certain amount of success with the ladies. Ah, give me, Lady Semi. May this rose offer the most beautiful lady in the kingdom serve as an apology. 
Oh, you flatterer. There's no flattery in my words, but simply truth. By the go... My Nevin. I don't know how long I'm going to endure their corniness. I roll my eyes and notice I'm not the only one who's embarrassed. Hastel seems to share my opinion of the situation from the look on his face. We exchange a brief glance for nodding. Our shared awkwardness binds us together immediately. You better save his compliments to your wife. How is Marla? A granddaughter is doing well, Sammy. The pregnancy is nearing its end, so for now she's mostly spent a lot of time resting and complaining. Oh, oh no, please don't. They're all family. Don't call and make over the grandmother checking it out for everyone. I won't be able to bear it. Grandma, we're not alone. I'm not sure the rabbit needs to hear our family gossip. I silently thank Hastel from the bottom of my heart. You are my hero, my saviour. I will write songs in your honour. I'd better be polite, though. Oh, don't worry about me. I can wait a little while until you have finished your discussion, if you wish. Uh, no, no, Hastel is right. That would be rude of me. I mentioned you're probably a lot more interested in anything I'd have to say. It's not every day you get me the chosen of a forgetful one, after all. So, if you can with my curiosity, what exactly can you do with your brand? Well, be honest, right now, not much. Can't even get it to awaken. Oh, I thought I'd wonder if a brand as special as yours would be more complicated to awaken, or it would go faster. If you listen to the old legends, they affect very exceptional people. Hey, I'm exceptional. Just not in the way he thinks. Is it normal to fail to control it at first? Of course. I didn't get awake in my brand until a good week after I'd received it. That's good to know. I was a worried that I would be slower than usual. I'm sure you might use your brand quickly, Eric. Earl is one of the best teachers in the temple, if not the best. Really? That's not necessarily the impression he gave me at the moment. I tend to learn quickly anyway. It shouldn't take very long. Well, I hope so. Like I've all said, it's part of me now. I just have to learn how to use it. Once the usual courtesies are exchanged, Sam and I head back in the direction of the castle. So, if I understand correctly, everything didn't exactly go smoothly. Not really, no. But maybe you had too many expectations of what it would be like to have a brand. The old lady puts a paw on my shoulder, her gaze softening as she searches mine. I don't know anyone who's mastered their brand on the first try. And trust me, I'm in a good position to say that. I've seen many a youngster go through this ordeal. As you said, at least you're alive and well. Same can't be said of all the beginners. It's not very reassuring to hear that, but it comes from a good place. She's just trying to cheer me up, and it's especially nice for her since I barely know her. Well, let's hope I'm good enough to lose a limb next time, then. The Fennec laughs softly as she takes me by the arm, leads me through the alleys again. On the way back, the thanks we passed on the trip are always in the same place and move aside as soon as they see us. Sometimes it's good to be feared, even though it rarely happens to me. Sammy offers them a polite smile before she looks up towards the rooftops. I follow her gaze and this time I see two figures walking without any difficulty on the tiles. You know, my own sons had some difficulties with their brands at first but they have become formidable fighters. My gaze goes from the silhouette to Semi, who smiles mischievously at me as to confirm my thoughts. A long silence ensues before she speaks again, as if she finds a malicious pleasure in my questioning. I found myself in a position similar to yours once, having the choice to enact in for the kingdom or live in my life freely, but in perpetual fear. I know it may look like a false choice, and that's out of fear. You'll end up turning to the former solution. But it's not fear that should guide your decision. What do you mean by that? I was a slave in Mecca, not so long ago. The kings offered me more than I could ever have hoped for by welcoming me here. Many might have seen my choice as a mere change of master. I serve the kingdom, after all. Some of my former freed countrymen, I've only offered my services to the hired bidder. You were given a choice, weren't you? Isn't that already a proof of your freedom? The fan nods as she continues her speech. I'd like to know where she's going with it. Indeed, but many leaders give choices and not really choices. As we think we'll find our freedom, we can sometimes head straight for a cage, no matter how gilded. In truth, it was the prospect of being able to change things that drove me to accept. 
Wish I could see things the way you do. But I don't even know how to awaken my brand, so I'm still a long way from being able to make a difference. I don't even know what to change. Oh, believe me, young man, there are many things to change in this world. Given my own history, I thought about changing Mechan at first. But Frostfang is not without his problems. This kingdom is not created through peace. War still runs in the blood of its inhabitants, with all the inconvenience that this entails. But this country is still young. It's still in the early stages of development, so it's far from perfect. It's up to us to guide it towards a more acceptable future. I don't think I'm the best informed person what is acceptable and what is not. This kingdom will not last two days under my guidance. The old lady laughs again. She pats my hand. Doubt is a form of wisdom. Inaction, however, is a form of ineptness. You have the prince's ear and his full attention as well. I'm sure you can both benefit from this relationship. What are your schemes, Semi? You're obviously part of the political game in this kingdom. But who exactly are you working for? I refuse to allow my relationship with male people to be driven by political interests. I promised him I wasn't here to use him, after all. But she doesn't need to know that. I think about it. I guess the kings already have a future plan for me, anyway. Semi doesn't answer and simply nods. Then there's another long silence as you walk up to the castle. Once outside my room, she bows her head to say goodbye. Be brave, kid. You'll need it. I smile and nod to her before entering my room. Brave, huh? It's one thing to be brave on stage. It's another to be brave in front of entire nations. The closer I get to my bed, the heavier I feel, like it's pulling me to it. I never sit in on it, looking at the floor. I didn't even have time to check on the others. Even though I know the Vekad and Tanak will still be able to get by without me, Haket must still be worried sick. I feel like the world revolves around me now. And for the first time in my life, I'm not sure I like it. And suddenly my thoughts are interrupted by knocks on my door. It's a little late for an unannounced visit. When I open the door, I find myself facing the impressive statue of the prince, who smiles at me with an exhausted expression. In all honesty, I was not expecting his visit at all. I thought he'd be too busy to come and see me, despite his promise made in the morning. Are you okay? You look tired. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll be better tomorrow. I invite the bear in. He drags himself to the nearest chair. He settles in heavily, so much so that I'm afraid the chair will collapse. So, what brings me the visit of the illustrious Prince Melbjorn? The grizzly sneers, shaking his head as I offer him a playful smile. Well, I have several reasons of being here in person, in addition to my promise. Well, first, I'd like to know if everything went well during your training, and second, I have to tell you something. Seeing my smile suddenly disappear, the prince is quick to elaborate. Well, nothing bad, don't worry. How about we start by talking about this announcement first? Well, as you wish. Well, there's a council meeting tomorrow afternoon to determine more precisely the role you'll play in this country. I nod as I look away. Even though the bear warned me in the morning, it still feels weird to think my fate is no longer entirely in my hands. You're invited, and I'll be there to defend you. I'd like you to meet me in my room tomorrow at the crack of dawn so we can repair you properly. Even if a dirty joke pops into my head, I mobilise all my willpower not to say it. This really isn't the time for this, Eric. I'll be there. Oh, good. But I'd like to ask you something. Well, I'm all ears. You know that talk we had about friendship? I think today gave me a little window into what you're going through. People are interested in my brand, for the kingdom, for the gods, or for whatever reason. See my disappointed look, Melbion tilts his head worriedly, waiting for me to continue. With all this attention around my powers, I feel like a tool more than a person. You're wrong, Eric. You... Wait, let me finish. I understand you have a duty to your country, and I think I understand your concerns, as well as your desire to be a good leader. I do not intend to force you to choose between your country and me. I would like you to promise to see more in me than just my powers. The prince nods and smiles at me reassuringly. There is something soothing about the softness in his eyes coupled with his deep voice. It's not a hard promise to keep, 
but I will keep it. I had no intention of seeing things any other way. I also want you to understand it's normal for others to expect a lot of you, now that you have these powers. You are exceptional. I know I'm exceptional. Nothing new there. I managed to wring a laugh out of the prince, which in turn makes me smile. Good. Didn't feel like dragging on this topic anyway. On a more serious note, I learned my lesson about responsibility pretty well, I'd say. I even restrained myself from messing with Vol, thinking about what you told me. Mirabron allows himself a polite chuckle, a subtle air of pride settling into his eyes. By the way, that training session, how did it go? It was surprising, I would say. It's not every day you get to see a ball smash his hand with a hammer. And I said after seeing a lot of strange stuff at fairs. Do you know that some people are able to swallow the blade of a sword whole without getting hurt? That's crazy. The bear's eyes widen, curiosity rising in his gaze. Up to the hilt. Well, after using a brand, it can't be done otherwise. I didn't see any evidence of brand activation. Well, the blade was not huge, but it's impressive to see. Melbourne squints his eyes at me if he's trying to detect a lie. It's surprising to discover that he doesn't seem to know about fair shows. Can't help but laugh as I wave my paws in front of me. Forget it, that's not the point. Well, it's more mystical than I expected, that's all. Um, maybe I should have warned you about that, indeed. But for all the criticism I have of the clergy of the Twelve, there's no denying they know a lot about brands. Problem is, I didn't learn how to use my brand. It's all very... theoretical. Well, it takes time to master, anyway. I know that for a fact. On top of that, I guess yours is harder to control than a normal brand. Does that mean it took you a long time to master it? I thought the prince would be exceptional. The grizzly gives me a jaded look, offering my best smile while resting on the edge of my bed. Oh, by the way, what's your awakening gesture? Reading books? Oh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I don't use it anymore. Oh, come on. You could help me. I haven't found mine yet. Melbourne exhales heavily and takes a deep breath as he answers me with clear annoyance in his voice. I've abandoned my training. There are more important things that require my attention. I knew the subject was sorely for him, but not to this extent. Come on, Eric, try to relax him a bit. You know, I learned to control my brand one of these days. I could give you lessons. I know how to use mine. I just don't use it. Melbourne's soggy look is pretty cute. This is a good time to tease him a bit. What do you think, Eric? It's always a good time for that. Well, if you're not interested in your brand, I can give you a different kind of lesson. The big bear tilts his head, questioning me with his eyes. The change of subject may be a tad abrupt, but I'd rather we move on to more pleasant discussions. You told me you want to learn how to dance. I still owe you that lesson. Well, I doubt I said that. That's what I understood anyway. I think there are other issues that need our attention right now. Besides, you really see me dancing properly? I don't have the body for it. But every princess knows how to dance. Also, you come to charm the ladies. I'm pretty sure they're interested in a lot more than just dancing. Oh, would you give them a tour of your personal library then? I have to say that'd be original. No offence, but I doubt that's the best way to break the ice. Maybe one looks at me in perplexity. I don't remember seeing you around many women. In fact, you spend a considerable amount of time in the company of the men, particularly with the Ambassador Tenok and Vekat. I would add Akhet to the list. I suppose he considers him more as a musician, less one of my friends. Let's not make my case any worse. Also, should I worry about the Grizzly's attention? Yeah, I'll take that as flattery. Don't feel like he's really obsessing over me. Indeed, I'm pretty specialised on that particular demographic. It looks like you know a lot about me. I know a lot about the people who live within these walls. But you're trying to deviate from the topic of this discussion. You think I should take your advice on seducing ladies, Mr. Manhunter? I just think there are some tips to work with everyone. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I know I wouldn't turn down a good dancer. Now, idea suddenly occurs to me. Ooh, daring, Eric. Very daring. That said, if you don't want to learn to dance, I can give you a whole other kind of lesson. I stand up and walk towards the prince, exaggerating my natural hip sway while giving him an amused look. At first he questions me with a glance, 
However, his incomprehension quickly turns to amusement. Is he challenging me? Go on, tell me what you can teach a prince. I don't know if we have exactly the same idea in mind. You looked more prudish than that this morning. Oh, but I have an awful lot to teach, even to a prince. I'm now facing the bear who crosses his arms and smiles at me, still defiant. Well, don't take me for a fool. I know exactly what you are doing. Oh? And what am I doing, my lord? I put as much sensuality as I can into my voice, determined to test Melbion's limits. It's far too much fun to play this game with someone of his rank. You're trying to arouse me. Doesn't it work? No blush or backward movement from the bears I lean in till our lips brush. He's bluffing, he's damn good at it. No way I'm backing out now, anyway. You started this little game, Eric, so you'll finish it. What was just a pretend kiss suddenly becomes a reality. You're full on kissing Frostfang's prince, Eric. What the fuck is wrong with you? This is absolutely the opposite of what you promised Raggle. And the worst part about it is that now the bear looks as surprised as I do. Neither of us really thought I'd go this far. Finally, I pull back and scratch my head with a laugh, completely embarrassed by this situation. I'll find somebody to take control of the situation, Eric. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you. That was pretty weak. Are you sure I'm not the one who got you? You seem more, far more embarrassed than I am. Why do I feel this heat rising in my muzzle? Am I really blushing? Come on, Eric. Your Scarlet's hot bunny, the charmer, the bed smasher. Simple kiss shouldn't make you blush. You're more impassive than I thought, that's all. You as a politics sense to do that. Besides, I've had time to mentally prepare for that. You're not exactly discreet when it comes to charming someone. Hey, I didn't ask for any comments or studies on my flirting techniques, Mr. Prince Charming. And last I checked, you didn't turn me down. I didn't say I didn't like it. Yeah, well, what? I tilt my head, question the bear with perplexity. Did I hear what he said right? It was pleasant. Not just the kiss, the whole teasing, too. Well, I should know this is a crime punishable by death to touch a prince in this way, without his consent. The grizzly didn't lose his amused expression. He's only playful for someone who's exhausted. Well, at least I'll die having kissed a prince. Not everyone can brag about that. I'm sure I'll make a fine song. He bursts out laughing and he winks at me. You don't like confidence, that's for sure. And you love it. Don't push it. I have my limits. I lean forward and whisper in the bear's ear without giving him time to protest. I'll do it again as long as my prince lets me. Melbion puts his hand on my chest and pushes me away with all the gentleness he's capable of, trying to hide the clear enjoyment he has at the moment by taking a more serious look. All in good time, Eric. You have more important things to do right now. This time I'm the one who tries to protest, but he turns around and rummages through a satchel hanging from his belt. He pulls out a book and hands it to me with a smile. This is the best study on brands I could find. Well, the most complete at least. I hope it helps you. For a few seconds I stand completely still while multiple questions run through my mind. The most important one being, how are you going to pretend you can read, Eric? The bear insists by waving the book in front of my nose, and I quickly reach for it for a realise I may have been a little too rough. I then pet the cover of the book as if to make it feel better. What the fuck are you doing, Eric? Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, my mind was somewhere else. As it often is. The prince chuckles softly as he stands up, giving his usual pat on my shoulder. Have yeah, some rest. I'll read it when you can. Hopefully you can impress all with what you've learned. I think about it, thanks. And get some rest too, Melbjorn. I insist. He nods as he leaves, closing the door behind him and leaving me alone in my room. I have a strange feeling that I both stagnated and moved forward during this day as I crash on my mattress. As I close my eyes to abandon myself to the arms of sleep, I ask myself one last question. Will I ever be able to tell the whole truth? Well, I certainly wouldn't mind getting a free tour of Melvion's library. It must be fascinating to look through. 
Yes, yeah, so we could spend the entire evening literally talking about books and looking at things. It's one of those times where you're playing a character and you find, oh, I have kind of too many things in common with them. It's slightly worrying. <laughs> yes, I uh, don't have the body for dancing either. That's my husband. <clears throat> but that was the uh, latest episode of Nevin. And we just finished that chapter, by the way. So we'll start up uh, now beyond chapter two, the council. And the next episode, which will be sometime. I have really not figured out past uh, the end of the year. Which sounds impressive, but then you realise it's early December as I'm recording this. Hmm. Uh, so, and uh, speaking of schedules, uh, next weekend, yes, it's Sunday, I'll be recording d and Saturday. Uh, it will be some more with Ken in Burroughs. And I definitely have one new uh, series starting, and hopefully two before the end of the year. I'll just be starting those up and we'll see how things go. I have so many things to do here. We'll be doing that. And I know several people asking me about Soul Creek. It is on my computer. I need to actually find the time to read it sometime before I decide what to do. So it's possible. I just need to find some time, which is not likely at the moment. But anyway, speaking of time, I'm wasting enough of your time rambling on here. So before I go, as always, special thanks to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are very much appreciated. And... As always, I'd like to pay special mention to my top patrons, who are Fluffy, Rafu, Bieka, Harvest Mouse Productions, Nova Starburn, Omar, Smutu, Andy Peng, Kartek, Gobus Visser, Bastian, Ryan Hall, Tiger Cup, Ida Corval, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Evan King, Exac, Aaron Fox, Mohammed Al Zamel. So special thanks to all of you for supporting the channel. And I have uh, one more thing I need to do soon. I'm hoping to get a new identity designed on that rather boring one. So look out for that at some point, sometime. I don't know when it'll be. I need to work on that. I have ideas, but time to work on that. But as I say, it is time to uh, go and let you get back to whatever it was you were doing before you stopped doing it to watch this video. And I'll see you again next weekend with uh, some more burrows on Ken's route. And I'm going to try and slot in a short story during the week after that. We'll uh, see how that goes on which day. But until next weekend, there definitely won't be anything in the meantime that's new. Thanks for watching. <laughs>